Today we're going to look at a problem that's going to review many of the calculations and concepts we've gone over so far. So let me set the problem up for you and then go ahead and see if you can solve it. So in this one we're going to have our, a piston and a cylinder. So here's our piston, uh, sorry, our cylinder here. We're going to place a piston on top of it. Now on top of the piston we're going to place a 100 newton weight. So this 100 newton weight is going to obviously push it down a little bit. Um, so when it pushes it down, the total height here between the bottom of the cylinder and the bottom of the piston is going to be 10 centimeters. The diameter of the cylinder is going to be 4 centimeters. And we're going to place, um, ooh, it says 2 moles. Actually, I did want to change that, so let me change that right now. Um, 0 0.01. So we're going to change that to 0 0.01 moles. So go ahead and do that. And yeah, let's go ahead and solve it. So why don't you push pause first, see if you can do it, and then I will come back to it. So hopefully you gave this your best shot. Um, let's go ahead and try this. So the first question is solving for the volume. So this is a, basically just a geometry problem, right? We're just going to find the volume of a cylinder, which is going to be the area times the height. So we're going to use pi r squared, the area of our circle, times the height. Okay, so our radius here, don't forget to convert. First of all, this radius should be 2 centimeters, and we're going to convert that. So 0 0.02 squared times our height, which is uh, 0.1 centimeters. Okay, go ahead and calculate that out, and you should get 1.26 times 10 to the negative fourth meter cubed. So let's look at letter B. Letter B says, what is the pressure inside the cylinder? So this one, um, what you're going to think about is uh, right above the cylinder here, right up here, it should be one atmosphere. Okay. Um, now before we put this weight on it inside here, this would also be one atmosphere, right? Hey, we didn't, that we didn't make this a vacuum or anything. But we're going to place this 100 newtons upon it, and that's going to compress this a little bit, which means it's going to be one atmosphere plus whatever pressure you have above it. So letter B is should be the pressure inside is going to be, again, one atmosphere plus whatever is the pressure above. And again, you can think of it also this way. You have an at, the whole atmosphere above it plus this weight pushing down on this. So that's going to have to be the pressure on the inside. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. So the pressure, remember to find a pressure. This is a force over area. So in this problem, the force was 100 newtons. That's how much we're placing above it. And then the area of this would just be this pi r squared component. So pi times 0.02 squared piece. So this would be the pressure above and let's see I get what do I get about 79,500 something 557 pascals. Okay which means when we add 1 atm we're going to add 1 atm don't forget to convert that 1.01 10 to the fifth plus this number, right? This P above. Calculate that out and I get 1.81 times 10 to the fifth pascals. So that's going to be our pressure on the inside. Okay, let's go ahead and box this out. Our volume is going to be this as well. So let's look at question C. Question C says, what is the temperature on the inside? So for this, we're just going to use our simple ideal gas law. So PV equals nRT. And so we just found our pressure. We know our volume. We know the number of moles. And of course, we know R. So let's do that. So 1.81, 10 to the fifth times our volume, which is 1.26 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, that should equal our N, which remember I changed that to 0 0.01, 8.31 times T. Okay, simple calculation, go ahead and find T, I get 
274 degrees and remember this is going to be in Kelvin. So the next question is going to be looking at the kinetic energy. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, remember kinetic energy is proportional to temperature and specifically, so this will be our average, specifically it's going to be uh, 3 halves Boltzmann constant times temperature. Alright, so simple enough calculation, 3 halves Kb is 1.38, 10 to the negative 23rd times our temperature. We just calculated that. That was 274 Kelvin. Okay, we should get an average kinetic of 567 times 10 to the negative 21st joules. Okay, notice that this is a small number, which hopefully should make sense because um, we're just talking about the average of each of these individual molecules here. So um, that's why it's such a small number, which brings us to the next question, which is the internal energy. So remember the internal energy, U, this is essentially the number of molecules. Uh, this is like if you add up all the molecules and multiply them by the, each of their average kinetic energies, that's going to be the total number of energy. Okay, so our internal energy is going to be N times our kinetic energy average. Remember, N is the number of molecules. Okay, so in this problem we said that there was 0.01 moles, and you know from all your detailed chemistry days that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, or in other words, the number of moles is going to be 6.02, sorry, the number of molecules times 10 to the 21st molecules. Okay, right, so if we want to look at the internal energy, we'll just multiply that each uh, atom, each molecule is going to have an average kinetic energy of uh, this amount, and so we'll just multiply by the total, total number to give us our internal energy. So 5.67 10 to the negative 21st joules. Alright, and so for this answer we get 34 joules. So again, this would be the internal energy due to the motion of the atoms, the kinetic energy of the atoms. So let's make sure I label these. This is going to be D. This is going to be E. Let's move on to F here. So letter F says, uh, how will these things change if the temperature doubles? Okay, so in other words, how will all these above change if the temperature doubles? All right, so let's just take them one at a time. Uh, how will the volume change? Remember back in that problem, this did say that the piston is movable. Right? So we are going to allow that piston to move. So if we look at our PV equals NRT, all right, if we increase the temperature, in fact, if we double the temperature, um, well, P and V, P or V could change. Well, V is definitely able to change. What about P? Well, the pressure, if we look at our piston here, the pressure is dependent upon the, the atmosphere out here plus that 100 newtons we had above. So the pressure inside is going to be the sum of those two. So by heating this up, what we're going to do is we're going to move this piston upwards, okay? But the, the pressure on the, on the inside will be the same. So the pressure is going to be the same. And by the way, this is the next question. This is called an isobaric process. So the pressure is going to stay the same. The volume then, if the pressure is the same, N and R are the same, then the volume is going to have to double. Okay, how about the kinetic energy? Kinetic energy, well remember that's proportional to temperature, so that would also double if the temperature doubles. What about the internal energy? Well, internal energy is proportional to the kinetic, which is proportional to temperature, so that would also double. And then lastly, um, I think that's it. Yep, we got them all.
Now conceptually make sure that this makes sense. Um, we talked about why the volume changes uh, kinetic energy. Remember, if we heat this up, the atoms are going to be moving faster. So if they're moving faster, they're going to have more kinetic energy. And if they have more kinetic and you add them all up, they're going to have more um, internal energy. All right, what about the average velocity? So remember, average velocity, so this is what, um, number, where are we at? E, no, F and G, we just did F and G. So this was G here, and this whole problem was basically F. So what about velocity? Well, we didn't actually, we haven't talked about the velocity, we will in the future, but um, honestly, what you really care about here is that the proportionality between velocity and kinetic energy. And so just think back to your days that kinetic energy is proportional to velocity squared, right? In fact, kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. So the proportionality is v squared, or v is proportional to the square root of k. Okay, so how would v change? Well, v, since the kinetic energy was doubled, v should increase, this will be by square root two times larger. Okay, so it would definitely go up and the amount it would go up would be square root two. All right, so last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and sketch the Maxwell-Boltman graph of um, both of these. So just to recall, let's try to take up as much space as we can, what our Maxwell-Boltzmann graph looks like. So over here, this is a graph of velocities versus essentially the number of molecules. All right, and if you recall the distribution for this, um, let's just draw in one. So this might, we'll draw one like this. Okay, it has kind of this curve distribution, although over here, uh, you're kind of bound by your um, absolute zero point on this side, but this one's gonna kind of extend, elongate a little bit. Now this right here, this is not the average velocity. This would be the kind of the most probable, right? The most number of molecules would be here, most probable. And if you look, since we elongate this a little bit this way, this average velocity is going to be somewhere uh, a little bit off to the right here. So this would be our cooler, right? This would be the um, cool temperature. I'll just write cool here. And then if we want to write the warmer temperature, so for this one, um, we're going to shift this most probable and the V average over this way, right? And so, in fact, the V average should be square root two times greater, but we're just sketching this out. Now, notice that the peak here is going to be smaller. So this would be our most probable. This would be kind of our V average. The point is, is that the it's shifted over here because it's going to be moving faster, right? Um, because it's warmer, because there's more kinetic energy, etc. So um, one question I have for you is why? Why is this lower than this? Okay, why does this have to be lower than this one here? So remember, this is the number of molecules. So this has not changed, right? We have the same number of molecules in both situations. So because this has kind of a broader shape, because it's warmer, there's gonna be more, a greater range of velocities here. Um, we need to have the same number of atoms. In other words, if you found the area of this red curve, the area of this green curve, we should have, they should be equal to each other because we want to have the same number of molecules for both. All right, so hopefully you did pretty well on that. Um, again, this is a good review for this point in the unit before we move forward.